continuing our fragmentation story, second part. Just as a reminder, uh, you may have singlet when you have just cation and no radical. You can have doublet when you have radical and no charge. You may have iron radical when you have plus one charge and radical on the same entity. Now, the rules are that you need to have the same spin state in your products as you had at the start. So if you have cation radical, you should have cation and radical. Alternatively, you should have cation radical and neutral molecule. If you have positive ion with no radical, you should have positive ion with no radical at the end. And then we have Stevenson rule that fragmentation takes place. Positive charge remains on the fragment with the lowest ionization energy. So continue looking at this. Very important is benzyl radical CH2 with phenyl group. To start with, uh, where this plus a stain, you can draw this way, you can draw this way. In fact, uh, there is rearrangement to have seven member ring, kind of unusual from point of view of usual organic chemistry. But you may remember that six unpaired electron makes aromatic. So these are base Hickel low. 2n plus 2. So this seven member ring will have the lowest energy, CH2 plus lower, and any combination with plus on phenyl ring will have much higher energy. This is the best choice for benzyl cation. Uh, alternative uh, root is uh, making phenyl times. So you, when you have phenyl group, uh, you may have M to Z77 to, for phenyl cation, which is 6, 6H5. Now, when you have alkyl benzene, you seldom see 77, as in this example. You always C91, just because of a very high stability of this entity. Uh, what happens with 91 cation later? It loses molecule of acetylene, C2H2, very stable molecule and then loses the same molecule once again. So making 91, 65, 39 sequence. If you have phenylketine C6H5+, plus, you again are losing C2H2, very stable fragment, to, to have C4H3 with 51. Uh, this is how you can see the difference between benzyl and phenyl, 91, 65, 39 sequence, or alternatively, 77, 51. When you start with toline or cyclic heptatriene, you're actually getting exactly identical mass spectrum. The, the starting compounds are different. The uh, stable compounds can be isolated, but when you have cation, uh, this is essentially the same cation. So 91 loss of one hydrogen gives you very stable. Uh, then you have sequence 6539. Alternatively, sequence 7751 is barely visible. Same story is here. You cannot see difference between these two spectra. 
One more example of stable ketine with aromaticity is allylic ketine. When you have double bond, it will easily make ketine with M to Z41. So carbon, carbon, carbon here. And whatever is left will go as radical. This kind of marker of double bond in your molecule at the end. Now it can be rearrangement in your molecule. So when you have combination of elements that can take hydrogen, it can be actually aromatic carbon, it can be oxygen, it can be nitrogen, and two other atoms here. And you have gamma hydrogen, so you have six, something like six member rings and hydrogen at position two atoms from A, D, A. You may have cleavage here, with hydrogen synchronously jumping into this direction. Uh, what's left is double bonded compound. All these will be cation radical. So how does it happen? Let's look here. We have cycle like this. Hydrogen jumps on this oxygen and C2H4 from here disappears. As a result, you have double bond coming here, OH and hydrogen sitting here. So we have M to Z72, now we have 44. Now what's interesting that uh, mass is even number. You have seen that all masses of all cations we had before were odd numbers. Now we have unusual ion with 44 and difference of course is also even number. Uh, it can be drawn in this fashion, so you need to show that it's not only cleavage, but addition of hydrogen. And uh, then uh, it's mass of 44. All alternative cleavages are just usual cations, like here, say, propyl group, and so on. This is very common marker for carboxylic acids and their esters. You have ester fragment, oxygen, double bond, oxygen something. So when you have cleavage, you have series of Maclefertig peaks at 60, 74, 88. So this is for hydrogen, then for methyl and for ethyl in our position. Uh, alternatively, you have alpha cleavage with 45, 59, 73, and uh, gamma cleavage with this, again, 73, 87, and 101. So that's how it happens with carboxylic acid. Uh, you have several cleavages with usual numbers, like 73 peaks, 129, but the strongest peak is even peak because of McLeferty arrangement. So you have uh, this fragment. Now, if you have meth 
steal ester instead. So similar molecule, but uh, this methyl is not here, but there. Uh, the same cleavage will give you iron with CH3 on this position, and mass will be larger by 14. So not 60, but 74. Uh, this is a sign of methyl ester. Uh, this process can be continued. You may have a rearrangement uh, of that sort once again. So you have difference 56 here. And then you have again difference of 28 here, making 60 again. So options. Another similar cleavage. Hydrogen is jumping onto this position. Cycle. Jumping into this position. And you have 92, which is unusual because usually you'll have 91 for benzyl. And yes, in reality you have 92, but also you have 91. So this cleavage at the same bond can be without giving hydrogen 91 always giving hydrogen 92 uh, then you have usual sequence 65 43 for dissociation of benzyl For benzoic acid esters, it can be even more complex situation when you have hydrogen cleavage here or two hydrogens coming here. So you have loss of this fragment and you have very stable cation like this with McLeferty. Alternatively, you can simply cleavage at this bond directly, having very stable cation of CO connected to phenyl group. Uh, this is signature cation of uh, phenyl carboxylic compounds. Anytime you have phenyl carbonyl, you'll have M to Z105, very stable cation of the strongest peak in this spectrum. Uh, that in turn dissociates giving carbon monoxide molecule and phenyl. In this case you have phenyl uh, that in turn makes 51. Well, that's how we'll decipher uh, this rather complex spectrum. Again, uh, this is just interpretation. I do not expect that you will instantly will draw such schemes yourself, but you should be able to understand when you see one. 